So this is the last part of the chapter 4 stuff which is on uh, plant transport. So plants in exactly the same way as animals have to transport things around. Um, there's not so much to transport really, not as many things um, certainly as, as there are in animals, but water would be one. Um, dissolved food, okay that's mainly going to be sugars but dissolved food is another, um, and dissolved now this is a useful word so you can have um, either one minerals or ions either one of those is uh, minerals or ions is a useful term try and avoid the term nutrients it's a bit too vague really um, it, it's not yeah I'd, I'd just try and avoid it when you, you're answering things uh, there are two types of um, tissues or uh, if you like just tubes really that transport the things around the plant xylem tissue long tubes which transport uh, the water and dissolved minerals and phloem tissue it's easy to remember because uh, phloem is um, begins with the same sound um, the F sound phloem and food and these if you like uh, you know, when you look at a leaf and you can see the kind of veins in it um, these veins uh, they're actually called vascular bundles but if we zoomed into one of them you know, when we, we looked we looked along its length um, you'd be able to see the xylem and the phloem tubes in there xylem tends to be it's the colors right xylem tends to be much bigger um, tubes like that and the phloem tends to be much smaller Inner tubes, if you can see that. So that, that's the kind of pattern you'd get um, with them. You also, uh, if you looked in the stem of a plant, you know, if you cut through the actual stem, uh, you tend to get pattern where the uh, the xylem, get the colours right again. You kind of see it in in patches, um, and it's closer to the centre. The xylem bit is close to the centre, and the phloem kind of sits on the outside. So it's that kind of pattern. But notice it looks like little carrots, doesn't it? Um, the, the xylem bit is, is the bit that's on the inside, the phloem is around the outside. Um, now if we were to look at a leaf, there are several layers going on here, so let's, let's kind of draw these as some uh, cells. Uh, we have a top layer called an epidermis, or the upper epidermis. In fact on top of that there is another layer, but it's not cells, it's like a waxy layer called a waxy cuticle cuticle oh, spell it properly cuticle there's a c in there um and that waterproofs the top of the leaf so some leaves particularly big thick plants sometimes you touch the leaf and they feel really um well waxy <laughs> um particularly desert plants um you know, rubber plants and things they have um they, they feel really waxy the top almost plasticky uh, and that's waterproofing. Underneath that we have a palisade layer, also sometimes known and certainly in the books referred to as palisade mesophyll. Um, now I'm not convinced you necessarily need to put that in as mesophyll every time, um, but you know that that's what they um, use in the, the book as the, oh Mr. Nelf, um, and so maybe I don't know, maybe you want to use it. I think Palace said it'd be fine. They've got lots of chloroplasts in. That's the key to it. Um, so that's where they're going to be absorbing the light. Um, mostly they're at the top as well. You then have this layer of cells that are kind of loosely bundled. So there's lots of spaces in between. That's called um, spongy mesophyll. Okay, so there's lots of air gaps in there where oxygen and carbon dioxide can get in and out and diffuse through. We then would have a lower epidermis. I'm not going to label all these bits. I'll just put lower e, lower epidermis. Um, but we can also have these little cells here called guard cells. And these are the things that normally when we look at them, we see them this way around. Um, so that would be the guard cell there. We just sort of slice through it. Um, but this is the stomata, so the space in the middle, that's actually the, the, the stomata or the stoma. Stomata is a plural, but that's the space in the middle, the guard cells around the outside. And these can open and close to, um, well, well, we'll see what they open and close for in a minute, don't want to spoil the surprise. Uh, so that's the structure of our leaf. Um, now, the bit that's probably a bit harder to get your head around, although it's straightforward, is this idea of transpiration. Well, transpiration refers to 
water being lost from leaves. Why would water be lost? Well, uh, it leaks out with these stomata basically. Some of it also evaporates. Okay, it just gets hot the leaf and you know some water gets through. Not loads because the cuticle stops a lot of it, but some does. But most of it, or if it's going to escape from the leaf, will escape with the stomata. And it leaves by evaporation. So it evaporates, that's a useful term, even though I've spelt it uh, or not written it very well. Evaporation. That's how it, it, it usually gets out. Now you can measure this using a bit of kit called the potometer. I love asking questions about potometers at A-level. But this is basically a tube. I'll simplify it. Um, and you stick a plant in the top whatever, with some leaves on. And the tube is full of water and you have a bubble in it. And as the leaf loses water, um, it sucks more water up and that little bubble moves along. Okay, and you can work out how quickly the bubble is moving as to how quickly the plant is losing water up um, through transpiration. Now there's a one little detail on this and it's sort of really high level I guess but it's to say that it's a popular question at, at, uh, at A level. Um, this piece of equipment doesn't measure exactly how much water has been lost from the plant it measures how much water has been taken up by the plant or plant uptake because some of the water that goes into the plant gets used inside the plant and not lost but it's still being sucked up so that bubble will still move it's a really small amount but they could ask you on it um, much more common is the idea that um, what conditions will increase transpiration rate and that's quite straightforward um, if it's windy if it's hot and if it's dry and if it's light. Now I'll just go through each of those together. Uh, why if it's windy? Well, it kind of blows the water away very quickly from the stomata. Um, and by the way, the, certainly the top three are just the conditions that you'd want to dry your washing. So it's easy to remember, hang your washing out, what do you want? I want it to be windy and hot or warm and, and dry. Anyway, the wind will tend to blow water away from the stomata and it allows more to get out. If it's hot, you increase the rate of evaporation. Uh, water is just going to evaporate more quickly when it's hotter. Uh, dry, that's a bit difficult to get your head around. Um, this is something to do with humidity. You know when it's a really hot summer day and it feels really sticky and you know difficult to cool down? That's because there's a lot of water in the air, so we'd say that's humid. Dry is the opposite, so there's not as much water in the air. Um, the reason that increases transpiration um, is that uh, it, it's to do with the concentration gradient again. There's lots of water on the outside. It's not as big a uh, concentration gradient for water to escape. The last one is probably the key one. Light itself doesn't affect water you know, in, in the leaf. But when it's light, the plant will have its stomata open because it needs its light, it's going to photosynthesize, it's got to have these open to let in carbon dioxide and oxygen. Okay. So if you get rid of the light, you turn the light off, um, the stomata will close because they can't photosynthesize anymore, but if these stay open, then water will continue to evaporate out. So light will increase the rate of transpiration because the stomata will be open. 